Do you struggle with your ABCs or ABGs as a nursing student? As a college student, you are not going back to kindergarten. You must deeply understand the airway, breathing, and circulatory priorities of every patient that you care for in the clinical setting. Today, we will discuss the AB priorities of airway breathing with a patient in respiratory distress to make the ABGs and its interpretation very practical. Most students fear this content, but fear no longer because we are going to make it practical and you will be a rock star by the time we finish this short video. In order to understand ABGs and what they represent, we must first understand what ventilation is. When it comes to ventilation, it's requiring when oxygen is inspired, that is what's coming into the cell, then ventilation is what leaves the cell with carbon dioxide at the alveolar level. Gas exchange is essential to every cell in the body because without oxygen and too much CO2, you will be dead or dying. That is why it is essential to understand the AB priorities and contextualize this to a patient in respiratory distress. We must never forget that though ventilation is essential for oxygen to come in, the body also needs the circulatory system of perfusion to deliver that oxygen to the body and to every cell. Therefore, breathing and circulatory perfusion are also interrelated and this relationship must be recognized by the nurse. The most common problems of ventilation that you will see in the clinical setting will include pneumonia, COPD, asthma, and in the pediatric population, asthma and RSV. Let's briefly contextualize this with an elderly female who comes to the emergency department in respiratory distress. Once she is settled, the doctor orders a set of arterial blood gases, and these are the results that you obtain. Her baseline is a pH of 7.38, her PCO2 is 60, her PO2 is 78, her bicarb is 38, and her oxygen saturation is 95%. When she comes to you, her pH is 7.25, her CO2 is now 85, her PO2 is 75, her bicarb is 42, and her O2 sats are 88%. Now, based on your knowledge of ventilation and perfusion, do we have a problem here? And can we correctly interpret each of these arterial blood gases? In order to recognize a problem, we need to trend and recognize the significance of what's relevant in this arterial blood gas and why and what direction is this patient heading. In order to, to correctly trend and identify how this patient is doing, we must first look at our baseline ABG and correctly interpret it and identify what's relevant and why. Her pH is 7.38, that is normal. Her PCO2 is 60, as you know, that's elevated. But let's look and say, why is it elevated? Let's look at her PO2, it's 78, that's slightly low. As we look at her bicarb, it should be no higher than 26. She is 38. The question is why? Well, when you understand COPD, you understand that because of chronically elevated CO2 levels, the body's going to compensate by elevating the bicarb that the kidney secretes. Therefore, elevated bicarb is a compensatory response to a stable but elevation of CO2. Her O2 sats are 90 percent which is normal so this baseline abg how would you interpret this well let's use four basic steps to help us identify the priorities that we will see and how to clinically interpret this number one her ph is normal secondly her pco2 is elevated and as we addressed why well because of that co2 elevation of copd the kidneys compensate so therefore, as we look at the, at the bicarb and the PO2 being slightly low, it's not a critical finding. Because of the CO2 being elevated, we have compensated respiratory acidosis. This is a stable and expected finding in a patient with COPD. In her second ABG, 
that was done two hours later. She now is in more respiratory distress. The nebulizers aren't working. She's now having tachypnea and now her pH is 7.25. Her PCO2 is 85. Her PO2 is 62. Her bicarb is 39 and her O2 sat is now 84%. Now, in order to recognize the problem here, what relevant data is a concern to the nurse? We need to recognize that she's moving in the wrong direction. Her CO2 is now elevated to 85 and her pH is down to 7.25. So what was once compensated is now clearly uncompensated because that pH is now not in the normal range of 7.35 to 7.45. What's driving it? It's respiratory because when we look at her pH, it's elevated as it was. And as you know, remember it takes up to 24 hours for the kidneys to compensate when there is a problem with gas exchange and elevation of CO2. So therefore we expect that to be relatively unchanged. So let's look at the four steps. The pH, it's low and it's lower, it's 7.25. The CO2 has elevated. The bicarb has remained stable and the PO2 is significantly lower. So what's the problem we have here? Well, when we understand the principles of arterial blood gas and acid base, we have a problem and we now have uncompensated because our pH is less than 7.35 respiratory because our CO2 is elevated and our bicarb is normal. It's not metabolic and it's acidosis. So in this context, we have uncompensated respiratory acidosis. If you are a nursing student and you struggle with acid base and ABG interpretation, you are not alone. This is a common struggle for almost every student because it is difficult and complex content. But I have a resource that can help you better understand this essential content. It's in chapter seven of my student textbook, Think Like a Nurse, concepts that must be understood. And it goes deep and explains the ABCs and even the Ds of priority setting so that you are better prepared to think more like a nurse and apply and use knowledge at the bedside where it matters most. If you found this video helpful, share this link. Or better yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Think Like a Nurse. It is a pleasure to work with you to strengthen your learning so you are better prepared for professional practice.